I heard your tour manager almost got arrested last night. Yes. What's the story? Oh, it's actually a really funny story. He, uh, well, our bassist went and took a little slash, which is a new word I'm using a lot. <laughs> it's for the Americans, it's pee pee. He went and took a pee pee. Uh, I mean, there was a toilet, but there was a queue, so don't hold it against him. He went to go pee pee and no problem. And then the tour manager was like, all right, I'm going to go do the same Followed thing. Suit. Followed suit and got unlucky. Cop came, pulled over. First thing he said was, I've seen your cock. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. But <laughs> that's quite an intimidating way to introduce yourself to yeah, someone. Yeah, that's not the first thing you want to say. And so um, he was like, you got me. Sorry. I'll, get, I'll take the ticket and let's go because we were late. We usually are. And then um, he was like, no, no, I've seen your cock. <laughs> so now <laughs> you reiterate sexual it. defense or no, uh, sexual harassment. Oh, indecent exposure. Indecent whatever. exposure yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then he was like, there's kids around here, so maybe I can make this even worse for you. And What time of night was it, though? It was... 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay. It was nothing, you know, it, was, it wasn't It was even nighttime. It was, but anyway, so um, he avoided it <laughs> by being overly <laughs> polite and just trying not to get baited because this cop was just like trying Looking to bait Looking to try him. it. Oh, he had yeah. a slow day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we avoided it. It's interesting because I've heard you speak before about trying to find like the little bits of magic yes. in the everyday. Yeah. Where have you found that today so far? Today so far? Well, today, I, I mean, I'm doing something which is crazy, which is playing every single day in the UK. I is, saw that when I saw the tour poster come out. I saw there was yeah, no gaps, and no I thought gaps. that's a, a bold yeah. move. Yeah, I didn't know how bold it was until I started doing it. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, I, I should sleep at some point. <laughs> but the magic of today was just seeing those hills and seeing Welcome to Scotland and all the little white dots of sheep on the hills and things like that. And I was like, wow, this is really happening. You grew up in the countryside, though, didn't you? Kind of. Oklahoma and Vermont and Paris. But really, I, by the time I got to Paris, I was an adolescent. That's really where my formative years were. So I've never been behind the wheel of a car, which here is like whatever. But in America, people are always like, You can't what? walk anywhere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I do. That's the thing. I've been walking. I just went on a big old walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I just take my legs, but it scares people. Well, I remember we did a podcast back in December mm. last year, I think, when you were back home oh, in yeah. France. And you were talking then about going off on the trail, and it yeah. was kind of just a thought. Yeah. And then I saw you going off and doing it, and yeah. it was amazing. Every day. How long were you out for? Like four months? Four months, 120 days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about most when you're walking that trail? Um, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mostly, you know, mostly just tried to be completely in the moment and not, really consciously not be like the future or whatever. I did think a lot about this tour because it was so exciting. Um, but yeah, you're pretty occupied with uh, getting one foot in front of the other, finding food and water and setting up your tent and whatnot. And it's a super great, simple life. How long are you walking for every day then? Kind of like miles wise? Miles wise, about 20 miles a day towards the end. In the beginning, I was doing more like 12 or so, okay. but yeah. That's not too bad. That's like you'd think twelve the, hours a day is like four hours maybe walking time or you'd think. But I guess if you're doing hills. Exactly. Yeah. So doing the Appalachian Trail, I just I didn't know this until after, but it's the equivalent of going up to Mount Everest and back down sixteen times. <sighs> It's a lot of elevation difference. It's actually all up and down. <laughs> so <laughs> I was expecting, and I keep seeing these little trails along when we're taking the road in England. I keep seeing in Scotland, I keep seeing all these like uh, little footpaths next to the rail. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do because it looks all flat. <laughs> and I'm like, that <laughs> looks like fun. Well, you were a walking tour guide in New York mm -hmm. as well before that. Yeah. Did that impact the experience for you in any way, do you think? And the way you kind of perceived it? Um,. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I like to like look around me and be like, what is the history of everything around me? Like this pavement, this crack on the pavement, like this whatever. And I kind of took that into the forest to be like, what are these leaves? What are this? What is this plant? And, you know, just being constantly curious on like a mi very micro level. But more so, I always walked in New York. Like if I could take the, if the subway or if it was like less than an hour and a half walk, I'd always do it. And that always like was, you know be like five stops on the subway. People would be like, "Let's just take the subway." I'm like, "No, I'll take a walk." And so that really prepared me, you know, a lot of walking. 
I guess as someone who's a songwriter as well, though, by doing that, are you almost kind of collecting inspiration in a way? Yeah. Oh, yeah, filling up the cup. Yeah, it's overflowing <laughs> right now. But <laughs> what well, I mean, if you go and turn, you know, the, the cup kind of starts to reach the brim. Yeah. At what point do you kind of utilize that? How soon after you get home will you kind of spill all that out into creation? I mean, I'm trying to, yeah, as soon as I can, really, because right now I'm just trying to, like, not let too much out of the cup. Like, I've got my phone, which I can do little audio voice recordings, luckily, um, to try and get the bop, 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 <laughs> whatever it's, whatever's going on in there. But, yeah, I need to get in front of a laptop real quick and lay down some ideas because... There's too many right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting we've spoken so much about walking so far because the yeah. audio book that you put out earlier this year yeah. very much has that feel to it. You know, you put the footsteps mm. in. I don't know if you recorded yeah. it walking. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Where were you walking when you recorded it? Oh, uh, not when I was Okay, not, not when so I was you talking. kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you recorded in a studio ready. and then you kind of put the steps on mm-hmm. underneath. Okay. Yeah. How did that experience, that audio book, compare to, to making an album? It was completely different because in the album, I give a lot of control to Sahil and sorry, my producer friend, because I'm really more interested in the songs and the feelings. Um, and he's really good at everything else, <laughs> the technical, <laughs> the mixing, the, you know, the levels and everything and the stuff that I just don't have patience for. <laughs> that he definitely does. I'm a Pisces. He's a Virgo. I don't know him that much about all that, but whenever I looked up, our relationship and it's very symbiotic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm like big picture he's like <laughs> let's get these little details you know well you need the balance yeah exactly so but the, with the audiobook i was like i'm not going to bother sahil with this one i'm going to do it all myself and make it real messy and dirty and and that's what i did it's 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 not well it has that kind of diary-esque feel to it yeah, yeah. i want it to be completely no filter me and whoever's listening um so that was really fun i really like that i want to do it again i might do a podcast a lot of people are like you got to do a podcast if you were going to do a podcast though would you would you structure it in a similar way where there's kind of like a concept at the heart of it in the same way there was with the the audiobook have you seen off the air on mtv or not no. mtv um the other thing, Adult Swim. No. Yeah. So what they do is they'll take like a theme, like love or sports or whatever, some random word, and then they have they find all of these uh, uh, pieces, like visual pieces that go along with that theme. I'd like to do something like that and like take like a feeling, like relax or whatever, and then like kind of score something around that with words and little interviews and something like less i feel like podcast the thing is it's usually narratives or just like me 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 you know and i want something that's like a little more out there a little experimental little you know something that although you would label it as a podcast might not necessarily be what a lot of people would class exactly as one more yeah. like an audiobook kind of yeah 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 but no book, just audio. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke in that audio book as well about being immersed in your own kind of internal world. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you feel like you're most in touch with that, most in that world? Uh, two places, on the trail and on stage. I feel like those are the two places I really belong. I mean, on stage, it's kind of hard to like be in your inner world because you're so public <laughs> but at the same time it almost is really easy to go dig deep in because your people are watching you like this is a great tour because everyone that's coming out to the shows no i'm not proving anything people are coming out because they already love me and so it's just like this great like they're like i love you and i'm like i love you too and like i just get to do me in front of other people and perform these songs in a way that I'm like, I'm really excited to play them for them because they're like, they know them and they want to hear them. And it's not like you're opening for someone else being like, Hey, I'm this. You're trying please. to win the crowd. When trying to win. Yeah, yeah. There's no winning. It's just love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where, I mean, you kind of, you touch on that world a little bit more on this album too. Oh yeah. Has the role that it plays in your life changed from the first record to this one? Yeah. Now it's like, what I'm happy with now is that I was worried when I quit my job that I would When be did you quit the job? Before the walk. Okay. I couldn't really do both. <laughs> yeah, disappearing for yeah. four months. He's like going to the woods, no Wi-Fi. But um, I was worried that if I put um, the stress, or not stress, but if I relied on expressing my inner world as a means of living, which is what I'm doing now, 
um, that that would put a lot, that would put too much stress on it or corrupt it in some way. Cause it's always been this pure thing that I can just do after 5 PM. And I thought maybe doing it all the time every day would be too much or make it like inauthentic. Yeah, I remember hearing a story I think Kevin Parker told from Tim and Pal about how his mm. father told that to him. Because I think really? his father was a musician too and he said, don't do it as a career because it will ruin it for you. Right, right. So, so far so good. <laughs> <laughs> so far it's just been like, it's been amazing. And I think it's really because I'm putting more of an emphasis. R- really what I'm doing right now is not a lot to do with like expressing the inner world that I have right now. It's more like expressing an inner world that I had when I recorded those albums that people know and they like. And so it's just fun. For, I'm like, I'm, this sounds super bad, but I'm also like a fan of myself. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound super humble, but like I know people are like, I want to hear when the train goes by. And I'm like, me too. Like, here we go. You know, <laughs> well, it's nice to be in love with your own. Yeah. Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then I'm like, I get it. I like him too. You yeah. know, I like these songs. And so I get to make you feel more connected to the audience too. Do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause we can both kind of like look at this thing, these songs and be like, yeah, we like these. And I just happen to play them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I just happen to have wrote them too. But that was so long ago that it's almost like, I'm like, yeah, I can actually appreciate them. I just, I'm just wary of the day where I'm like, I don't like these anymore. <laughs> Can that happen? I don't think it'll happen. I don't think so. Because I tend to sit on stuff for a while before I release it. Because that kind of does the process of whether I'll hate it or not. How I know. long did you sit on the album for? The new one? The new one? The new one was recorded before lockdown. So it was finished in... Um, uh, well, actually, it wasn't finished until summer 2020. And now we're October 21 that we're releasing it. So sat on it for at least a year or so. And the song, but the songs themselves, probably like three or four years old, to be honest. Like maybe. Well, I remember you said this last time too, that you've got quite a few albums written. Yeah. You're kind of very much thinking. Well, yeah. And you know the trajectory, the <laughs> you know the trajectory, trajectory we got yeah, it there in the end I, <laughs> of where you want to go with it and you can yeah. kind of see how each album fits into that puzzle for you mm-hmm. yeah exactly and so yeah i'm like kind of playing a part right now in terms of like the like i said that songs are like three or four years old at this point but i'm like i still love them and i still get a lot of joy out of playing them so i'm like it's a good, it's a good part to play right now, you know, and I'm not going to do it if it's not fun. That's my promise. <laughs> I remember last time Tune speaking in reference to that trajectory. Yeah. We got a hey, first time there. Nice, nice. <laughs> you said that you very much felt like you have to kind of do the same thing twice in order yeah. for it to make an impact in yeah. relation to this record. Absolutely. And yet to me, when I listen to it, hmm. it feels like quite a different record. It had to, it had, because yeah, I, I definitely said that like definitely the, the song, the songwriting, uh, I feel like that was something I did. It was kind of like a, a the one, two punch. But when I sat down to record it with Sahil, we had, I was like, we do need to, this does need to be a, some sort of an evolution. If we just do the same thing again and use the same, you know, presets and use the same I mean, whatever, then that's not going to, that's not going to be interesting. Yeah. How did you go about that? How did you find the direction that the songs needed to be taken? And cause if it is coming from a similar place, songwriting wise, but mm-hmm. you want to do something with it, how do you not just fall into doing the same things that felt natural first time around? Well, you just kind of get creative with the recording process. So for, for example, for like the, we did in the, for the first time we did everything in like one room and it was just one room, the sound of the room for this one. We were like, let's do the drums over there. Uh, we actually did the vocals in London. Oh, which wow. was really, yeah. Was that, that when you were on tour here last time? Or were yeah, you exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. 2019, I think. Yeah. I played in Manchester after Christmas and then just popped down to London, did a little, vocal session it's fun <laughs> and it felt more you know i just i just threw my money at it. i just threw like i had a job and i was like all of my job money's just going towards that's this what it's fantasy. for yeah if exactly. you're working a job nine till five every day that you were maybe getting a little bit tired of towards the Absolutely, end yeah. what are you doing it for if you're not going to spend that money on something yeah, you love on something crazy like going to london and recording vocals even you know no one's putting me up there no one's like giving me the studio i was like let's just do this let's just like act like we're rock stars before anyone's, <laughs> you know, trying to make, you know. So I think that added a lot 
and also just like i guess the the, the theme of the album is a little different than the first one the first one's more like a blanket you're putting on and the second one's more of a i gotta get out of here it's a gut punch and so it's almost a reaction to the first album in some sense that you know you were looking at new york and the kind of competitive rat race nature of that yeah. is this very much someone six months on from that yeah this is six months on this is like um this is like okay you get you made it to new york you're living a you know great life you got a great apartment with the, your best friend you got a job you're fulfilled you're like doing all this stuff what now and i just hate being comfortable <laughs> I just hate like complacency. So I just blew up my life. I just quit my job and got rid of my apartment and said goodbye to my best friend. And I mean, I love him. We're still, we still hang out all the time and when we can. And But I was just like, you know what? That was too good. So are you still in New York? Or are you? I'm actually not even no. right now. Well, right now, obviously I'm in Glasgow, but <laughs> <laughs> I have the Torians in Paris and then my parents live there and I'm just going to chill with them for a little bit. And then try to tour the rest of my life or at least the next 10 years or something you know in the same way that you have the albums kind of mapped out do you very much have a picture in your mind of how you want things to go in terms of a day-to-day -day existence yeah i have like after doing that walk i was like my ideal year would be six months touring four months walking two months recording two months just with friends and family i think that adds up to 12 but yeah that's a nice balance that sounds like a good fit right i was like that would be my ideal life just like i get my alone time and my exercise and i get my i get to go out and be in front of people and then i get to have my quiet time with sahil making the stuff and then i just get christmas and you know new year's and hang out with my family would you ever do like another walk in a similar way to the trail yes yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah i want to do, do it you have all an idea again. for where next or are you going to do the trail again yeah. Okay. I don't think I'll do the trail again just yet. I want to do the Camino del Santiago. Ooh, Where about that? Yeah, we can hear the sirens in Glasgow. Nice. There's always something going on. I love that. <laughs> it's in the north of Spain. It's like okay. a pilgrimage that people do. have been doing for like hundreds of years. I don't know, maybe thousands. It's like a medieval wow. thing. Yeah. You go from the south of France to the west coast of, of Spain. And it's like 600 miles. It's like much chiller than what I just did. How far was the trip? Is it 4,000? Uh, the, tr this, the trail I just did was 2,100. 2, I did a thousand, I only did 1,600 of it because it got cold, but <laughs> I, mean, I had to come out here, you know. Well, what uh, months were you doing it? You were kind of doing it in the May, summer months, May, yeah. June, July, and August. And I stopped in September. But you get up there and you get into the mountains. I guess if you're in the, the high, yeah. yeah. It gets like in the 40s for, I mean, not 40 Celsius, that would be hot. <laughs> but it gets like around zero. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Every day, all the At time. At night. Yeah. At night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other kind of motifs on this album that feels like it wasn't there as much on the first is that you're quite often referencing music itself. Yeah. And you're looking at your own songwriting in the context yeah. of the art. Yeah. What was drawing you towards kind of discussing that? Well, I don't know. I guess it's just like music is a funny thing because it's always been in my life. It's always been something I wanted to do. Um, but this is like the first time I'm like really going all in. I feel like me, like most people I've like, you know, dabbled in Ableton and logic and done all these like little demos at home forever. This is the first time I'm like putting it all on the line, like hiring people and blah, blah, blah. And like really going all in. And it's like, it's kind of a funny, it's like what my day to day is now. It's just like a funny process. It's not what you think it is. I mean, it's, it is what you think it is. If you listen to interviews of musicians being like, it's not all fun and games, you know, like <laughs> it's like, it's a lot more than just music. It's funny though, cause you were talking about how you kind of, you don't like comfort and you kind of destroyed your old life. Yeah. But then at the same time, very quickly that destruction turns into growth Yeah, and absolutely. straight away you're building this new thing up, but exactly. you kind of need to knock that other thing out of the way in order to do so. Exactly. And that's, I kind of understood that. I was like, the only way I'm going to really go all in is if I don't have a plan B, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you think that was something you always knew? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I finally just like took that step and was like, see ya, see ya New York. <laughs> <laughs> Where where do you see your your kind of growth as a narrative mm. songwriter on this album most? Because it does have that slight conceptual bent to it too with the character mm. of the Wonder Kid that you're yeah. kind of playing with also. Right. Well, it's kind of funny because I feel like most con I feel like uh, a good concept album is a very loose concept album. 
you listen to like Sgt. Peppers, there's like two songs about Sgt. Peppers. You know, there's like they're the just rest. united by that kind of overarching idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not like the, the space operas of the '70s. They're like okay, okay, like those. The I like I was I started to write an album that was like Wonder Kid fell from Earth, and well, you know, and I was like, wait a minute, this is super lame. So I just kept it real chill, and it was just like I'm gonna go with this theme of getting out and and like yeah getting really just like getting out <laughs> how clearly can you see the line that divides the parts of the album that are tying into that story and the parts that are coming from personal experience oh it's so blurred very blurred oh yeah, yeah it's very blurred <laughs> <laughs> yeah it turns out i'm wonder kid <laughs> <laughs> and i'm john i'm all the things you know like it's all me i want to ask as well what do you see the what do you reckon the relationship between the first song on the album and the last song on the album is? Oh, I always do this. This is funny because some people are like, well, I'm keep noticing you keep doing this thing. It's like this, the last song on the album is always like the real push off. You know, the first one is I'm down whatever. And this one is cars. They're always the really different song on the album. Both of those songs, I think I, we did in one take. I like to just like make it a completely different vibe altogether. Whereas like the first track, on the first album that's home and on the this one this one it was john which i was thinking about taking that um really the home is the same song as is that the one which is the second song in the first album same thing with john i was gonna take that intro riff before i come in with john before i come in with that i was gonna make it its own song i was gonna maybe even call it home too just to like give a little funny thing but i was like let me the, the riff is cool i'll just keep it all in one song but I love starting with like a riff or something that's like, room, welcome to the album. You know, like it's gotta, it's gotta have some stuff, you know, I really think in album format rather than song format. And so I love it to have like a full ride, you know? How do you see that being perceived when you drop it as a single though too? Does the song take on a different function in that saying? It does. Yeah, it does. And it's funny because if I could do it my way, I would only drop albums. Um, but you just can't do it that way. This, the people just don't consume music like that. They consume music in singles. And now if you release an 11 track album, that's got to have six singles, you know, whereas before maybe a band would drop one or two singles from an album. You do wonder if it could change, though, because, I mean, if you look at, like, last month, Kanye and Drake both dropping albums that didn't have singles, I don't right. think. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't they have, like, 40 tracks or something? Or I don't even know. Too like, many tracks. Too <laughs> many tracks, yeah, too many tracks. Yeah, when I get there, I think I can do that. Yeah, Drake and Kanye, like, level, that would be sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at this point, you know, I'm just trying to get on the playlists, you know. <laughs> I do wonder, though, like, what level do you feel like you have to be at in order to have that creative freedom where you can start to kind of push against the current trends? I mean, honestly, it probably won't be, I probably will start doing it whenever I like eke out a living. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I'm like not living in my parents, I'll be like, now I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I mean, you look at bands to the like car seat headrest, they're putting out these albums that have like 10 yeah, minute songs on it. And that's stuff. true. And didn't he put out, or is it him or Alex G? One of them put out like, 10 albums before they got signed or something. I think it was Carsey. He yeah. just chucked stuff up on Bandcamp. Like, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> which is cool. And I really respect that. And I could probably do that with the amount of material I have. I'm just like, there's just been too many times I've sat on something and then looked back and been like, oh, I actually hate that. <laughs> yeah. Like, so that was, that was enough to make me like sit on stuff a little more. Is there a narrative importance to it? Also, though, because if we look at these first two records you've put out, mm. I don't know if the second one would have the impact that it does had it come out a month after the first one. I think right. you need that space to yeah. kind of let it breathe. Absolutely. And then you can kind of, the growth feels more powerful in that exactly. sense. Exactly, exactly. Like the third, the next album, I'm like trying to push to like release like ASAP and people are trying to get me to calm down. But I'm like, February, February, we got to release the next album. They're like, dude, this just came out. I'm like, yeah, well, February is months away. <laughs> I'll give them time. They're like, no, they need time. I'm like, do they? <laughs> we'll see. Start dropping singles in February, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like my label. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> do you think... Uh, I mean, you could do the podcast or something in the meantime, though. Yeah. Because like, it's exactly, kind of what you did yeah. last time where you had the audio book. Exactly. Out. Yeah. I'm like, I have to keep myself busy somehow. Actually, I just recorded. They were like, oh, we want another version of John Take Me With You. 
they were like, we want an acoustic version. And I hate when bands do this. Like, they come out with an acoustic version of a song. And you're like, okay, cool. They can also play acoustic guitar, I guess. You know, it's like this is the song, but with acoustic guitars. So I was like, nah. I, I was like, I'm not going to do that. I just did it all on um, like a keyboard. So it's, there's going to be an electronic version of John coming out, I think, in December. It kind of comes back to what we said about the podcast, where it's kind of doing something that needs to fit that template, but also feels unique to you and isn't yeah. just doing it, you know, by the numbers. Yeah, it's just so easy to phone stuff in. It's just so easy, like, you know, it's just like the music is like everyone's done that. Like, you know. That's when it becomes content and not art, though. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And like, yeah, my yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I don't like that word content. It just feels very filler. It like, feels corporate. You yeah. Know? It feels very like, yeah, we need content. It's like... <laughs> Okay, take a picture of your butt. I don't know. Where did that word even come from? <laughs> like, it doesn't feel like something that was used, like, no. five years ago, maybe? Probably not, no. I mean, it's. I guess whenever we got this, like, real, like, attention economy and, like, people realize it. Well, the thing about these algorithms is that it's all about quantity, not quality. And so you have to, like, constantly. Video every day. Yeah, video yeah. every day, every day, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is as long as you're posting and people are looking at it. So, yeah, no, content. <laughs> how do you you know you mentioned that idea of this kind of attention hungry culture that we live in where we constantly need to be you know, looking at something something new yeah how do you kind of cope with that from both the point of view as an artist mm. and the point of view as someone consuming it and as a part of that culture as an individual uh, it's funny because i feel like i haven't really returned from the trail yet i still don't really feel like a fully that functional yeah state, i yeah. don't feel like a fully like um I don't feel like I'm fully participating <laughs> yet again. I'm going to go home and just spend two weeks on my phone and just sleeping and make up for those four months where you go away from us. <laughs> yeah. But people keep saying things that like, I don't get like the references and I'm like, wow, you, you step out for you those references will be out of date. And I want that. Yeah. Though. It's weird. You step off the merry-go-round for a little bit and it's just, you just like spun around a few times. You don't even recognize it anymore. But, but in terms of putting stuff out there, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to keep doing whatever I want to do. Because really. <laughs> once you start thinking about what do people want, that's where you get tripped up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, again, it comes back to the importance of kind of having it so far planned out that you can kind of determine yeah. what you all want because you have the space and exactly. freedom to do so. Exactly. I'm kind of I'm not a control freak, but I've got like my idea of what I want. So, yeah. You do something on, I think it's maybe and make another record looking at my notes there trying to remember yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where the start of both of them they feel like they almost trick us like you think it's going to be one thing mm. and then it turns into something else yeah like they both have that kind of short intro bit and yeah. then we flip and we're into the yeah the rest of the song yeah where did that kind of idea feel most present for you in the making of a song which song mm. surprised you most from your initial vision for it maybe into what it became maybe maybe definitely did yeah whenever i it was one of the, that was in my first set in 2018 that was like supposed to be on the first EP actually but i never got it right and then whenever i recorded it i really wanted it to sound like um bad bad not good or like um that k Trinata, bad bad not good collaboration there's like a song that you listen to and you're like oh this kind of sounds like maybe and it's like that's i wanted something like super raw and jazzy and whatever and then when I went to Silo and we made it and it, it was like, it's such a maximalist song. Like, and you listen to the song, there's like so much going on. It's quite a minimalist album. It's a minimalist album. But then you listen to that song and you really start to like hear all the shakers and all the, there's like a bass, there's an electric bass and a stand up bass to get that, that bass sound. And there's Mellotron, there's like all this stuff going on. And at first I was like, no, 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 strip it, strip it down, strip it down. I want bass, guitar, drums, singing. That's it. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Actually, no, no, put it back, put it back, put it back, all the whistles and stuff, you know. <laughs> so that, yeah, that surprised me. I was like, generally, I'm looking for the most raw, stripped down, you know, first Linen album kind of vibe. And then Sahel sometimes will surprise me and be like, you could add a lot of stuff to it <laughs> and it could sound good. What do you feel it was that is at the core of that song that allowed you to do that, though, and allowed it to feel right in that context? I guess, well, for that song specifically, probably just the dynamic between the like the chorus riff or that bass riff and then the other part. Like the song is such a like puzzle already in terms of those two parts going together. Um, like 
just that that kind of the fact that it doesn't really have like a chorus besides just that little line like don't i know i know i know um so it's a weird song it's just like it's not it's a weird it's a weird song it's not like i love you a bit like that too though it kind of plays with it structurally the way you have that kind of like heartbeat repetition of i love you the whole way through it yeah yeah exactly um yeah that kind of structure allowed it to for him to like throw all this other stuff at it um and it didn't feel i feel like if it was a traditional easy song it would have felt like no it's just this is just too much crap but because it's so weird and disjointed it worked so yeah if it works it works yeah yeah you love people yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's interesting because i was watching a, a george carlin interview yeah. not too long before we did this oh, and yeah. um I thought it was interesting because he spoke about in that how he thinks that when people are on their own and mm. they're an individual, they're yeah. beautiful. And he had this wonderful quote where I think he said, you can see the whole universe in someone's eyes if you look closely enough. Yeah, that's true. But he also said that he feels that when people start to group together, mm. they sacrifice that kind of individual beauty mm. as a result of becoming a part of the group. Mm. I wonder where do you kind of sit on that? Where does that fit into your philosophy mm. and your, your outlook on the world? Well, I, f- I feel like whenever I went and walked the trail, the first thing that I noticed, uh, besides like the beautiful nature or whatever, was just the lack of expectations of that people, no one was expecting anything from me. They don't even, you don't even go by your real name. Like I went by the name Sunshine. And being outside of society, where you have to put on a certain role and have a job and look busy. It's like the society, you gotta look busy. If you don't look busy, people are weirded out. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that I had like stress and anxiety because of that. I was just, cause I'm such a chill person, whatever. I guess when it was there the whole time though as well. It was there the whole time and it just, but then I guess it just kind of melted off when I went out there and I was like, oh wow. And then when I got back, it was such a crazy shock because People would be like, what does your Friday look like? I'm like, what is that? What kind of question is that? I don't I don't know what my Friday looks like. It's Wednesday or whatever. Ask me on Friday. I don't know. Like, I was like very free spirit. I don't make plans and blah, blah, blah. It turns out you can't do that in a city. Like, it just annoys you all of your friends. Like, you know, they're like trying to make plans with you. And you're like, I don't make plans. And they're like, you suck. <laughs> and like, and, but the trail was almost about finding a space to be free from that and free from those expectations that come free. from being a part of a group, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I totally understand that quote because as soon as you get into a group, um, you know, there's all the us versus them things, of course, but there's just all these expectations that people will behave in a certain way and whatnot. Whereas, like, if you're approaching the world as an individual, just on the road or whatever, you just, it's much more about appreciating. And that's also a thing is like, you realize the language is really bad. It fails us at expressing our appreciation for like little things like the wind and things, you know, you can't really be like, oh, the wind is nice or something. It's not gonna express, people are, someone's gonna be like, okay, weird. But you know, it's, but there's that, that inner world we were talking about before you feel you, you know you feel it in yourself and you're like wow this is so the trail was uh, that inner world that you have the trail was almost a way to get to that whilst being around other people yeah like you're in your inner world but with other people exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly that's the cool part and the reason that i think you can really get there when you're out there is because you're not really thinking so much about the future because this is where you're meant to be or like this it's like when i was telling about like those places i feel most comfortable are on trail and on stage is because that's where i'm supposed to be it's like you're on you're, you're performing you're not thinking what am i supposed to be doing it's like no i know exactly what i'm supposed to be doing i'm doing it right now and you're not thinking like i wonder what i'm gonna have for dinner tonight or whatever because you're just like no, i'm here. this is what i'm doing you know and so often we're like we put off our happiness and we're like you know i'll be happy as soon as i get that job or as soon as i get like more money or as soon as I get paid, like I'll have this, whatever. Whereas like, that's kind of ignoring the fact that life's happening right now. And so whenever you're on stage or on trail, you're like, you're very aware that it's right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is it. This is it. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's a great note to wrap it up on, man. Hey. Thank you very much. Yeah, Cheers. of course. That was beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>